No wonder the New York Times felt the need to dismiss him as some silly, if not altogether frightening, radical. That's scary when he's not only quoting Milton Friedman, but a mass of people is cheering wildly. Mm, this is bad news for the New York Times. Ted Cruz, Republican nominee for the United States Senate, is our guest. Ted, I, you know, I, I remember the good old days when you'd say what time you were going to be on, you'd come on because you weren't doing Fox and Friends and all the Nash. You know, those were the old days, like three <laughs> days ago. <laughs> so a lot has changed over the last 48 hours. Well, good morning, my friend. And what, what hasn't changed is, is I still love the opportunity to go on air with you. Are you exhausted? Sure, uh, but but I'm invigorated beyond words at the same time. Uh, so so you win the nomination. I mean, this wasn't supposed to happen. It, this was this was a bigger come from behind than Marco Rubio over Charlie Crist in in Florida. Nobody believed it. You were outspent in massive numbers, and then you wake up the next morning and the phone starts ringing. Uh, people wanting to get on board. I mean, that that had to be sort of a an exhilarating, uh, enjoyable experience that. All of a sudden, people are starting to come around the idea this thing can happen. Yeah, look, I mean, this has been an unbelievable testament to the grassroots, to, to, to what can happen when conservatives come together. And the biggest thing I want to say this morning, Michael, to you and to every one of your listeners is thank you. Thank you from the very, very bottom of my heart to the thousands and thousands of Republican women and Tea Party leaders and grassroots activists who got out and voted, who spread the word, who phone banked, who poured their hearts into this victory. This is y'all's victory, and, and I am I'm humbled and honored to be marching alongside each, of one, each and every one of you. Well, it is, it is. These are exciting times. And then uh, the New York Times writes a piece for God, Texas and golf where they dismiss you with this silly little idea that they don't even need to go over your agenda because it's the same old cut spending, shrink government, repeal Obamacare. You must be scaring these people. Yeah, I, I got to say, I, I'm not even smart enough to realize when they have an attack ad. I read for God, Texas, and golf, and I think I love all three of those. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I have to tell you, I don't know if you saw the email I sent to your campaign staff, but it's one of the best campaigns I have seen run in the last 20 years. Well, it it well, seemed like... You couldn't. You could not afford to make a mistake. Your team couldn't afford to make a mistake, and they didn't. It was a small team. You know, I'm getting feedback from from your former opponent's uh, inner campaign that there were a lot of people sitting around making a lot of decisions, and it seems that most of them were bad. You guys ran a lean, mean campaign. I wasn't mean. It was a lean campaign, a very strategically sound campaign. You were stretched in a lot of directions. You crisscross the state. You seem to be doing the right things and building the right coalitions. It's a pretty impressive victory. So who are some of the folks that called yesterday to uh, wish you well and sign up and, and get on board with you? Well, we had a lot of incredible calls, but I'll tell you the most meaningful was, was my former boss, Greg Abbott. Uh, you know, he is someone who Good man. I, I worked under for five and a half years, has very much been my dear friend and mentor. And, you know, when he called me, he just said, Ted, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what you did. This this was impossible, and you guys did it. And, and that that was that meant a lot because I respect him more than words can say. Have you talked to Sarah Palin yet? Uh, I have texted, but I have not talked with her directly. Well, I didn't get a chance to tell you Tuesday night. Ted Cruz is our guest, Republican nominee for the United States Senate from the state of Texas. Um, she tweeted your name uh, and and excited about your victory and within about two hours, you were trending, uh, not in the local, but in the U.S. trending for Twitter. And I don't know if you follow Twitter, but usually, I mean, you got to you got to be on Comedy Central or John Stewart or Surreal Lot. You know, you got to be. Yeah, yeah, sure. It, sure. It, it was pretty. It was pretty cool how fast that happened, and right. and what people were saying, people from around the country that were looking at this as. You know, this is a harbinger of good things to come for the grassroots across the country. It's part of a trend. It's part of a pattern. Yeah. No, no. I, I think what it demonstrates, I hope and believe, is 2012 is going to be the second half of 2010. It's going to be another tidal wave. And that's what we've got to do to, to turn around Washington, to transform the Senate, and, and to get serious about solving these problems. I mean, at the end of the day... The, the reason people are pouring so much into these races is is they want leaders who will go to Washington and roll up their sleeves and do the hard work it's going to take to bring people together and stop spending money we don't have. 
I agree. Uh, Ted uh, Ted Cruz is our guest. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst, I know, called you uh, before you went out. You waited. I thought that was the right move. You waited um, to give your victory speech or acceptance speech until you heard from him and then until you gave him an opportunity, which bumped you off some of the national news. But I think in terms of integrity and honor and decency uh, and his service, I think it was the right thing. What did he say? Uh, it was a very gracious call. He he, he called and, and, and said that he congratulated me and my family and our team and said we had uh, run a very hard-fought race and, and that, that, that I had his support, uh, which, which I, I appreciated. Look, that, that is not an easy call to give. Um, you know, you're right that we, we waited uh, and, and wanted to give him the opportunity to make that call, thought that was the proper and respectful thing to do. Uh, and, and, and I understand that's the, that is always a very, very difficult call uh, to make. But we're now working very hard on, on bringing Republicans together. Um, well, and, and, and when you win in November, you're going to need to work with him as the lieutenant governor and you as the U.S. senator. Ted, I have about one minute left. Um, all of a sudden, the media is promoting you as a Hispanic. And one of the things I think that was good about your campaign, I literally had people email me yesterday and said, you know, I never thought of him being Hispanic. Yeah, I guess the name Cruz, once you give it. But the beauty to me was you're American. Your, your dad came here from Cuba, but yeah. you're American. Look, absolutely, and, and, and that's the American story. I mean, all of us, our ancestors came from someone, somewhere. And, and I think what, what unifies us together is that we are our children and grandchildren – of those who fled oppression and came here seeking freedom. I mean, that's, uh, you know, as you, as, uh, you know, you were standing, standing by my side on election night. Uh, you know, the biggest message I wanted to convey was a love story for the, the journey to freedom that is America. And, 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 and none of us, we are all brought together and unified in that. I love it. Ted Cruz, onward. Get you some rest and get back out there on the uh, hustings. Very good, sir. Thank look you look forward again. to it. All right. The People's Candidate, the Tea Party Candidate, and the Republican Senate nominee, Ted Cruz. More Michael Berry Show coming up.